Hello and many thanks for joining Owen Horn of Africa. This is Future Africa program and I am Panta Umbelete hosting the program. Today I'm joined by Pan-Africanist revolutionary Kwame Gonza from Ghana. Kwame, a very warm welcome to the program. Oh, thank you so much, my brother. Thank you so much for having me today on OBN and uh, greetings to the viewers who are watching us from all over Ethiopia and all over Africa and all over the world. Would you please tell our audience your background and area of expertise? Uh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Kwame uh, Gonza. Uh, as it has been stated, uh, I'm a mechanical engineer, uh, but more so uh, I'm a Pan-Africanist, uh, someone who believes in the welfare of our continent, the stability of our continent, uh, Africa. So uh, that is the person, that, that, that is someone who is called a Pan-Africanist. If you uh, believe in the stability of our continent and the rapid development of our continent, the, the welfare of our people, not only on the continent, but across the world. So uh, those uh, are the shoes in which I stand. That is the position uh, which I occupy. I've been uh, uh, the media director media and publicity director of Kwame Nkrumah Ideological Institute uh, in the past. Uh, and currently I'm a co-founder, uh, founder of uh, Connect Africa, uh, which is an organization that is responsible for bringing together the forces uh, that are supposed to fight for Africa. And we have identified about three forces on the continent that will be able to fight and take on uh, imperialism uh, this neocolonialism that is disturbing the continent. Uh, we have identified uh, the progressive Pan-African forces on the continent. We have identified the critical masses of the African people, and we have identified uh, the progressive governments, because there is some governments on the African continent which are bent on helping the African continent. They are very passionate about uh, helping the African continent overcome its challenges. So those three groups are the ones which we are trying to bring together. Uh, at Connect Africa, and that is the job that we are engaged in right now. So we want these forces to work together, uh, you know, as a, a unified, formidable force, you know, to be able to counter uh, 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 colonialism and neocolonialism that is uh, disturbing our continent so that we can develop rapidly. What does African regional integration look like from practical aspects? Um, the the African regional, uh, con you know, uh, continental integration, as you have uh, asked, I think when we are talking about it, the, the, you know, we have to understand where we are today, and then the the history of this integration. Uh, the the integration people talking about uh, integration of the African continent did not start today, uh, even though today there is some efforts that have been made. Uh, for example, at, at the regional level, uh, at the regional level, I mean, you know, we have projects like IGAD, we have projects like the East African Community, uh, we have projects like ECOWAS, Economic Community of West African States, we have SADIC uh, in the South, the Maghreb, and, and the different, different areas. Uh, but to understand uh, uh, where we are coming from before we reach, we, we reach where we are, I think it's very important to go back to Addis Ababa in 1963 at the formation of, of the Organization of African Unity, which is today the African Union. Uh, uh, this organization was formed uh, with the purpose of integrating Africa politically. I know there has been, uh, and you asked about political, uh, you asked political, economic, and culture, but this organization was formed to integrate Africa politically. And the purpose of integrating Africa politically was uh, for us to have a single powerful country, okay? I know people are approaching it from the economic point of view as we are seeing today, the Africa continental free trade area. That is, that is an economic project. But the vision, the original vision of the founders of the Organization of African Unity, which is the African Union of today in Addis Ababa, was to integrate Africa you know, politically into a force. Now, when you integrate Africa politically, 
that means you are able to take care of your foreign policy as Africans. You are able to take care of your military needs as Africans. You are able to take care and protect your resources and your people. That means you have shut off the people who are interfering in the continent. Because originally, who, the, the, the biggest proponent of a unified Africa, who is uh, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, who definitely originated from uh, Ghana, uh, he envisioned that Africa to develop rapidly, like what China has done. We have seen what China has done, and, and, and definitely Ethiopia has been trying to emulate what China has done when it comes to the, to the area of, of development, rapid development and, and industrialization. Nkrumah envisioned a rapidly developing, re developing Africa that should be able to develop in less than a generation. But we, we have not been able to achieve this because our approach to integration of the continent, uh, we did not move in the shoes uh, of what Nkrumah envisioned. We were supposed to integrate politically and take control of our resources because we know that external forces, especially the imperialistic forces, who came here 600 years ago, have interest in Africa's resources. There's no way as Africans, how we could have stopped them, you know, from interfering in Africa and protecting our resources and protecting our own security and protecting our people and then carrying out an independent economic policy. For example, like what Ethiopia was doing and is being interfered with. So that interference, since we are all residing on one huge landmass, which is called Africa, there's no way you can build a small country out of Africa and make it successful without the interference of these imperialists. So we were supposed to unify, you know, uh, uh, politically, and then we would carry out all these projects, you know, Africa country trade area, security, integrated security, all these. And then we would celebrate ourselves culturally because africa is diverse over 2000 uh you know tribes and these tribes are almost nations when when you look at it how we are proud as a people so this diversity as africans we were supposed to have freedom to celebrate it in an integrated political system that protects us but now we have this attack from external forces uh and they are encroaching and destroying our cultures they are destroying these tribes and, and the different cultures by this infiltration. The hegemony of the Western world, you know, has infiltrated and is affecting even our tribes and cultures and destroying them because we lack that blanket, that strong uh, protection that was envisioned by uh, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. So I, in, in, in concluding this question, I think that we need to approach uh, the issue of integration, not like the current system that, you know, the, the, the current approach that is being carried out of, of talking about uh, Africa continental free trade area, because if we don't, we are not producing, there's no way we can carry out uh, Africa continental free trade area. The foreigners still will come in and take advantage of, of the industries because they have superior products. You have seen Nissan, you have seen Volvo, all these companies, Toyota, they will come and take advantage of our markets. So unless we integrate politically, we build the capacity, then we can trade freely. And this trade can be beneficial to the, to the Africans. I'm not saying that the Africa continental free trade area uh, is a bad thing, but I'm saying that the time it will take for the Africa continental free trade area to benefit the Africans, it will be very long if we don't take the approach of unifying Africa political and fighting for it. We have to fight for it to stop the interference. Great. From peace and security perspective, how do you see continent Africa in general and Horn of Africa in particular? Uh, this, the peace and security, the, the continent is in a very dire state, you know, uh, when it comes to security, is, is in a very unstable uh, situation. And to a larger extent, to a very large extent, this security situation has been worsened uh, by the interference of external forces and this is because as we as africans we have failed to assert ourselves and i think that it is time uh for us as africans uh to assert ourselves and say we will con you know we, we will protect this continent we will solve these problems by ourselves instead of inviting external forces 
I will give you an example for, uh, you know, uh, uh, when you look at Somalia, what happened in Somalia in 1993, the United States came and attacked uh, Somalia uh, uh, and the country was destroyed, the country which was very, you know, prosperous and clean and, and the economy was booming in the 1990s. But 1993, the United States comes there with, with, with its arrogance and attacks the country and destroys the country. 30 years on, the country has never come back to, you know, you know, to, to peace. And this is the same situation which we are seeing uh, in Libya. The attack on Libya opened the gates for, uh, uh, you know, uh, militias and, uh, and terrorists to cross from the Middle East. From the Middle East, where the same United States and its allies, the Western world, they opened, they destroyed the place. And these terrorists have come into, you know, Libya and have crossed all the way to South you know, to the south of the continent, to the western part. We have had attacks, you know, in Burkina Faso. We have had attacks in Ivory Coast. And, and, and the, the terrorists have crossed all the way to Mozambique. Okay, so, but this, uh, from our Pan-African understanding and analysis, is a strategy to continue to dominate the African continent with the narrative that the continent is unstable and it needs help from the west. But this uh, is what we must insist on as Africans, that these, uh, these problems, as Africans, we can approach them from uh, an African perspective and with African solutions, and we can solve them. Because when it comes to security, honestly, uh, there's no one who will solve these problems for us, apart from ourselves. If we form one of the ideas which uh, uh, Nkrumah put up in 1963 at the formation of the Organization of African Unity, one of the first ideas which he put up was the formation of an African high command. But where's, where's our Af African high command today? So that has not been formed. So we are talking about a rapid, uh, you know, a, a, an African rapid, re you know, response military force or standby force that will be able to respond to all, you know, the instability all over the continent. So the instability is there on the continent. Uh, but majorly it has been fueled by foreign forces. Uh, and the only thing which I would blame uh, the leadership, and I want to thank uh, the Prime Minister Abi, because for him, he has approached it, you know, aggressively and said, we will solve this problem. So the only thing I would, uh, you know, uh, blame the other African leaders is that they have not taken a stand to say, we will solve these problems by ourselves. We don't need external interference on this continent. We do not need French military bases on the continent. We do not need the United States military bases on the continent. That is the only way to stabilize this continent by taking on the responsibility by ourselves, we as Africans. Because we know that Mali, countries like Mali have complained about France, that it is funding terrorists. And yet on one side, uh, France has been claiming that uh, it is in Africa to help to stop the terrorism. But a full country like Mali, which has dismissed, dismissed France and the Fr French ambassador, has come out to tell the people and, and tell the whole continent that the French junta in Paris is sponsoring, you know, uh, terrorists, even at the United Nations. And Mali has shown evidence that France has been doing this. So these external forces who are claiming and pretending that they are here to protect the African continent, we are discovering today that instead they are destabilizing the continent. They are making it worse. And we know the reason for this. The reason for this is to retain control over African uh, resources and you know, control over Africa's roots, trade routes, you know, the disturbance uh, all which we are seeing in Ethiopia and all that, to be able to prevent a superpower rising out of this region because of the control over the Gulf of Eden and, and the, the Suez Canal. Because these are trade routes which they consider very important. So they can't allow an independent African country to be powerful in this region. So all these, you know, are attached to Africa's resources. And this must be understood in its clarity. People, you know, uh, in the region, in the East African region, the Horn of Africa, you know, on the African continent all over, have to understand that these people are here to steal and destroy because they have destroyed the rest of the world. You know, you can go to the Middle East, Libya, I've mentioned Libya, I've mentioned uh, Somalia, Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan. Everywhere where they go, they have left destruction. So we cannot allow them to continue 
to do this to the world and we cannot allow them to do this to Africa. And we as Africans, I think we have to take a stand. And I applaud the position actually uh, which uh, the Prime Minister has, has, has taken, the Prime Minister Ahmed Abi has taken, and, and also uh, the, the, the regional bodies. And recently also we have seen South Africa taking a very strong, strong stand and resisting uh, this coercion and, and, and blackmail. So uh, that is the, the, the state, the state of our, our continent when it comes to security that we are not in a good situation and external forces are interfering in the continent and destabilizing it. But we as Africans have to take a position and say this cannot continue and we will take control of our continent. You have wonderfully answered my question that I was to ask you. Uh, in connection with the points you have raised now regarding the Westerners' interference in Africa matters, what is their interest? I would not even uh, like to give them the dignity of calling them superpowers. Uh, I think these are colonialists and they are exploiters. Okay, these are Western exploiters and colonialists. Uh, one of the things which Nkrumah said, uh, uh, he, he, you know, uh, in the 1960s, in, so, in some of his work which he put out, uh, because Dr. Kwame Nkrumah wrote uh, a, a plethora of books, he, he wrote many books. Uh, books like Towards Colonial Freedom, Neocolonialism, The Last Stage of Imperialism. Uh, he wrote a lot of books uh, which I would encourage, Africa Must Unite. He wrote a lot of books which I would encourage all the African youth to, to go out there and read. Uh, and these, some of these books are available on the internet. Now, Nkrumah said that imperialism does not change uh, in, you know, uh, in substance. It only changes in form. So what Nkrumah means by this is that imperialism doesn't change its ways. It only changes how it achieves those ways. And we all know that the United States is not, right now is the flag bearer of imperialism, especially Western imperialism. It carries the, the interest of the, of the Western world all over the world. And the purpose is to uh, continue their domination and for them to continue their domination, of the world, it means continuing to exploit other countries and become rich while the rest of the world becomes, you know, uh, reels in poverty, while the, the, rest of, the rest of the world struggles with the poverty. So the interest of the United States is clear, has been made clear by even the leaders themselves. What they claim is international law, uh, which is uh, their interest that everyone should be following, is for them to continue to exploit Africa's resources and benefit from Africa's resources, you know, build up their manufacturing. We have seen that there is a, local, a lot of corporations on, on the African continent, which are Western, and they're exploiting Africa's resources. You can talk of oil companies, you can talk of mining companies in the Congo, you know, Glencore, who are exploiting, uh, you know, our lithium, cobalt to build their electric cars, build their computer companies, build their, you know, uh, manufacturing hubs, building, you know, aircraft like Boeing, Airbus, all these are built from resources which are coming from our continent, uh, you know, uh, electronics, you know, Samsung and all these, Apple. So the purpose for them is to continue this exploitation. We, 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 we know that uh, a lot of lithium is available in the Congo. A lot of lithium is available in Zimbabwe, which has been disturbed for a very long time. We know that oil and gas are in, in, in plenty, you know, uh, in, in a lot of quantities have been discovered in Ethiopia. We know there's a lot of oil and gas, you know, in Mozambique. We know. So these are the interests. This is the driving force of these imperialists on the continent. And like Nkrumah said, that the reason why the imperialists came to Africa was a economic. That was the reason. And that reason has not gone away. So let people not buy into the narrative, the false narrative that these people are here to bring democracy. They're here to bring freedom. They're here to give us some human rights. Freedom and human rights are not uh, objects which are given to people. They are not given to people. People fight for them. And we fought for the freedom which we have today. And these are the same people who are oppressing us. For us to gain independence as Africans or for Ethiopia to retain its independence, you know, it had to fight. Africa had to fight off these people to get independence. It had to fight off these people 
to retain its independence for Ethiopia. It had to fight off Italy and Mussolini and his fascism. So we had to fight these colonials all over the continent. And this struggle has continued. So it is not the same people that should be turning around. They have no right to turn around the same people who have been oppressing the Africans and killing us to claim that they are fighting for human rights. I think this is this is a mis there's a misunderstanding there and many Africans actually have fallen victims to this false narrative and it needs to be dis dismissed uh with the you know with, with the loudest voices which we can get so they are here to steal from Africa to make themselves rich to grow fat you know to continue to grow fat you have seen fat politicians from from Washington and, and Brussels moving all over the you know the, the world proclaiming things while our people you know, are hungry. So they want to take from us while claiming that they are fighting for human rights. And I think that it is time, the time has come, this is the information edge. The time has come for us to expose uh, this hypocrisy, these lies that have been spread uh, so that we can take control of our continent as Africans. What we Africans do to build a united and peaceful Africa? And what should African leaders do to ensure lasting peace and security in a united Africa? Yeah, I think that uh, what we have to do as Africans, uh, first of all, as, as citizens of the, uh, of the continent, I think we have to continually inform ourselves about uh, uh, what is going on all over the continent, not only Ethiopia. Uh, we, we understand that all Africans definitely came out and supported Ethiopia uh, during these trying times. Uh, 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 and I think that all Africans, uh, especially the young people, especially the young people, we have to inform ourselves uh, about what is happening in the rest of the parts of, of, of the African continent, in Mali, in Burkina Faso, in Guinea, uh, 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 you know, in Ivory Coast, uh, in Central African Republic, Egypt, you know, Algeria, Morocco. We have to take control of our continent as Africans. So. That means that this will help us to avoid manipulation because there's been a lot of manipulation, the divide and conquer tactics, which the West relies on to survive. You know, all over the continent, they will be jumping from side to side all over the continent, manipulating the different countries. So this is the only way for us to avoid that manipulation. That is number one for me. Number two, I think that the strategy of consistent and intensified or enhanced engagement has to be employed all over the continent. I mentioned, I singled out uh, the Prime Minister Abi. I think that he has done an excellent job on this strategy, engaging not only, uh, 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 not only uh, 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 you know, the region, but also engaging all the other African countries. So I want to see the Prime Minister engaging more on the continent. And not only him, but also the other African, you know, countries. They have to come, and we continue to talk together. The African leaders are the ones I'm talking to. They are the ones I'm talking about. We have to talk to each other because if we do not talk to each other, we cannot know what is going on on the different parts of of, of the continent. This is the integration. Yo, know, if it means uh, sharing economic policies, we have to share these economic policies. This is the only way for us to take control of our continent and, and avoid the manipulation. If it means even intermarriages, let people marry all over the continent. Let people move, you know, all over the continent. There's no reason why we should not do this. So this will, have, will, will help us to avoid the manipulation of these exploiters and colonialists that are, are lacking all over the continent. So I think the African leaders have to work then together with the citizens themselves. Because the citizens want an integrated Africa. It is very clear. For us to have security, we have to work together on the security itself. We have to have an integrated security infrastructure. And we have to push out the colonialists. We have to push out the foreigners. We have to push out specifically the United States and France. They have to be pushed out of this continent. Their security infrastructure has to be removed from the African continent. And we should have a unified security infrastructure on the continent. We should have a unified political government on the continent. This is the only way for us to take care of our continent. There's no other way. Nkrumah stated it clearly in 1963 in Addis Ababa.
these are the steps we have to have a union government and as young people we have to work on it and 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 um, and, and the reason I'm, I've, I've been very optimistic and hopeful with you know in in the prime minister abe is that when you look at his speech uh which he gave uh he, he, you know uh, uh this year in march uh, uh at the 35th ordinary session of the african union you could see what you know uh you know what Nkrumah was saying in in prime in the prime minister's speech we, we want a politically you know integrated africa we want a prosperous africa these are the words of the prime minister i'm i'm just paraphrasing him i'm i'm quoting him we want a politically unified africa we want a prosperous africa we want a renaissance africa these were the words of the prime minister Abi. but when you go back to 1963 and examine these were the words which Nkrumah was talking about these are the things which Nkrumah was talking about. So in his picture, I think I see what other African leaders need to, you know, to emulate. We need to work together. We need to engage consistently on the continent. So and 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 and, and I thank the other governments which have stood with Ethiopia, not only the, in the region, but all over the continent. But that is not enough. That is not enough for us as Africans and young people we want to move across this continent with single passports like like what happened if you really ask what happened to the single african union passport that was launched in kigali in 1994 uh by 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 the then chairperson of the african union commission because as anazuma and president kagame and other african heads of state what happened to that passport those passports should be given out all over the continent so i think that this is the approach we have to work together we have to inform ourselves about our continent but consistently the pan-african forces that are the forefront of understanding africa's problems i think they need to be pulled to work together with the progressive gov progressive governments on the continent like the government in ethiopia government government in mali for example i'll point out i'll point out the government for example in zimbabwe i think these governments need to come together into a very strong force and they need i i want to emphasize this I want to re-emphasize and emphasize this. They need to talk to each other. The government in Ethiopia needs to talk to the government in Zimbabwe and share the notes on how to struggle against this, this aggression. It needs to talk to the government in Mali, it needs to talk to the government in Guinea. We have to talk to each other. And then we have to bring the Pan-African forces in play also into that. And that is what we at Connect Africa, my organization, which I belong to, Connect Africa, that is what we are trying to do. That is what we are you know, trying to achieve and 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 any government on the continent uh if it wants to give us support we are open to this kind of uh dialogue and conversation so i think that working together as africans and talking to each other i think we will be able to overcome these problems the security economic and political problems affecting our continent well kwame if you have any message to leave before winding up this session yeah so uh the message i would like to leave uh is that uh, first of all, I want to thank you for having me, for inviting me. Uh, the OBN, uh, you know, uh, as, as, has been a, a great network, uh, not only in highlighting, uh, uh Ethiopia and, uh, the solutions that should be impl implemented in Ethiopia, but also, you know, highlighting the African continent. Uh, it has been really uh, very instrumental in highlighting uh, uh the, the you know uh, what is happening all over our continent uh so i would like to say uh that we have i think that at this stage where we have reached to trust uh what the prime minister abi uh is doing uh he has been consistent very very consistent in his approach uh, uh and i think we have to continually stand behind him not only in ethiopia but all over the region and all over the continent and in the diaspora, we have to stand behind uh, because I see this as a spark. What is happening in Ethiopia? It is a spark uh, for what uh, uh, what great things are coming for Africa. If you go back in the 1930s and 1940s, the that Mussolini spark, you know, Mussolini attack, uh, Italy's attack on Ethiopia was the spark for Africa's independence, actually, which led to the events that happened in 1945. Because all of us the world the africans were enraged uh, you know by the attack on ethiopia so this spiraled into the independence movement you know from 1940 1945 africans congregated in manchester 1945 1957 10 years later we had an independent ghana gold coast and it was events like this so i see what is happening in ethiopia 
as you know uh, symptomatic of what is coming and then the reduction in you know in power the decline of the west you know we see all these these are symptomatic of of, of the birth of a new africa and we as africans now we have to stand confident in our continent confident in ourselves confident in our abilities confident that we don't need aid for us to thrive on this continent we don't need any political aid we don't need any military aid we don't need security from outside we can do it ourselves because we have the youngest population we can do it ourselves we have the resources we just need to leverage our resources and get the capital which we want to invest we need investors on the continent we don't need aid from anyone we need people who are coming here they want to invest they want to do business with us as africans so as africans i think we need to stand in confidence absolute confidence within ourselves uh, within our leaders who have shown the ability you know uh, and the desire and the love for our people people like the prime minister abi i think we have to stand you know behind him as africans and then other african leaders who we have identified that these are good for the continent i think we stand together with them and build a new africa and new systems new political systems new economic systems that are going to rapidly transform our continent in less than a generation so i want to thank you very much i want to thank the audience uh, who are watching uh, uh, and i would like to say uh, that Africa must unite uh, for all to exist uh, in peace and prosperity. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Pan-Africanist revolutionary Kwame Gonza, thank you for your time and your analysis. Thank you very much. Dear viewers of Obin Horn of Africa, this is all we have for today. Till we meet with other analysis, bye-bye.